Welcome to Talking End Stations. I am Madderall here with, uh, well, we'll start with Caleb. How are you doing, Caleb? Evening, guys. And uh, also with us today is Rich Richman. Hello. And uh, our guest today is Baltram. How are you doing, Baltram? All right. Uh, can we say that again? Let's make sure we can hear you. Oh. I pushed the wrong, push the dark button. Uh, hello, I'm doing great. There you go. All right. So uh, let's actually meet uh, Baltram and talk with him for a little while. It's uh, kind of late his time zone. And, uh, and then we'll see if we have some news left over. I believe the new Keepstar was put down today and two more Keepstars in Delve were uh, slated for destruction. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going down today, but we can have a look at that at the end of the show. But first, I want to know more about Baltram. How are you doing? And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So, hello, I'm Baltram. I am a low sec PVPer for the past eight day, uh, eight years or so. And uh, currently, I live in Amamake with my boys. We're referred to as the Amamake boys at this point, since the original Amamake crew kind of went to a C2 and just does their C2 stuff, right? And yeah, I don't know. We're trying to fight the good fight, and we're a small group. I stream on Twitch as well even though not very regularly lately. I don't know. That's uh, do you, about it. I love to Capital Brawl. Uh, what do you do on Twitch? Uh, what kind of stuff do you stream? Is it mixed or do you do solo? Um, solo PvP mostly, right? Maybe some small, like, um, I don't know, like roams with my corp or something, but nothing too big because I realized that as soon as you stream any kind of content that's remotely interesting, you will get stream snipes. 250 eagles will slide in out of nowhere, and that's the end of the story. Nice. So you're in the Amamaki Keepstar. Uh, what's the name of the group that you're with? You were said, was it the Amamaki Boys or something? And uh, We're actually uh, No Handlebars, is uh, what our, our alliance is currently called. How long are you going to keep this name? I don't know, dude. I mean, for now... We have no plans of changing it, but who knows, dude? I mean, if somebody comes up with a really funny meme, we might switch, but I think for now it's going to stay no handlebars. Uh, I have to say, I like the um, one of the old ones. 420 MLG Twin Turbo 3000 Empire Alliance Reloaded. I um, Quite a mouthful. The 420 MLG Twin Turbo 3000 Empire Alliance Reloaded. Ticker dank dot, dude. Dude, who, made, who thought that up? Obviously I did, dude. Oh. I mean, actually, I think it was a group effort, right? Like, I started the 420 MLG, then a friend was like, yeah, we, it should have a twin turbo, and that twin turbo should be grade 3000, right? So we added that, and then it, we just kept going. And it had to be reloaded as well, obviously. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it has to be reloaded. It's one of the traditions in EVE Online. It's uh, You put a dot at the end of it. If you're Sorry, if you have a, an alliance name or something, you put a dot at the end of it, or you call it reloaded, uh, which means the uh, it's the... Something to do with the original, but it's not the same people. Uh, yeah, I think it was reloaded dot actually, which was extra dank. Yeah, but you got both both things covered. I want to ask you about Amamaki and the guys that you hang out with and uh, the whole situation there in Amamaki. Like, uh, tell us what what it's like to be in that. I imagine you're at the Freeport Keepstar there and in that system. Yes, we stage out of the Keepstar. So, what's that group like? What do you guys do? Why? Are, what holds you together? What brought you together? I mean, what brought us as a group together is really just, um, it's hard to tell, really. I don't know. I used to love playing the game, right? I mean, I still love playing the game. There's no game like EVE, right? But I had a, a, a burning sensation of a love for the game, sort of like playing 10 hours a day every single day for like four years. And people started enjoying to fly with me. And then we got more and more people. And we ended up being less than a corp and more like just a bunch of friends that like doing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I always push people to do more things and more complicated things, right? Be it like running five, six, seven accounts or whatever. And we try to take fights that other groups don't dare to take. And that inspires other people to think like, hey, you know, they're doing some kind of cool shit. I want to fly with them. And, you know, I so don't know, I guess that's what we do. And that's why people want to fly with us. At least some people like, yeah, yeah. you attracted people to you. Uh, what are some of the I guys guess. that are well known that fly with you? If any. I don't know. I mean, there's CSM Phantomite, I guess. Some people might know him Maybe. from the CSM. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
there's a mantos i don't know if anybody knows a mantos really he is um he is uh, running the the what's it called the tama you know the space detroit freeport system there's a space there's a freeport sotio in tama with a whole production complex of Raitarus and Atonos around it as well. He runs that thing, right? Hmm. Um, I would say mostly the pilots that might be known, and actually no, it's like mostly solo PvPers, right? Like maybe you know Blight's Wretch, maybe you know Blind Hunter, I don't know. I guess they're legendary solo PvPers, but on the grand scale of like, you know, Nusek, Blob Warfare things, they might be less known, right? But more in the solo PvP kind of community. Yeah. No, oh, those are good names. Um Right. So is there like so, the Keepstar, does it belong to one of you guys or are you guys just using it to house yourselves? Uh, we're just using it to house there really, actually. Um, at first we staged out of an Astro host, but then we were like, you know, the Keepstar is a free port, so why shouldn't we live out of it? You know, it makes managing our Titans and Supers a lot easier, even though that comes with a lot of like drawbacks before we were able to field. I mean, we're a group of like 20 people, right? Mm -hmm. And we can probably push our fleet if we really wanted to, to like, I don't know, 100 plus characters in fleet, right? Which means people have a few alts. Um, and before that, it was a lot easier to do actually stuff with Titans and Supers because people were always in their Titans and Supers. But once you move to the Keepstar, people like to get their characters out of their Titans and Supers and do other things with them. So living in a Keepstar can be very nice, but it definitely comes with drawbacks as well. But we still stage out of it because why shouldn't we, right? Yeah. It's harder to kill than if we anchor a Fortisar. Some blob is going to assemble and kill it. That doesn't seem very interesting. Yeah. A little bit safer there. Now, do you live out this Keepstar free or are you paying extra taxes to use a Keepstar and operate there? So we used to live out of there for free. But then um, there was some diplomatic incidents. And now we have to pay taxes for cloning and building stuff in the Sotio, which... Uh, I greatly hate, despise, whatever the word is in English. But I hate paying taxes. What is it in, uh, in your language? What is your native language? Uh, German. I'm from Austria. Oh, okay. Which obviously is a source for great memes, you know, because uh, <laughs> I consider myself a PvP artist, right? And somebody else used to be an artist, and the first group corp that is simulated into our yeah, lives. Let's, let's not go there. And it's just a funny <laughs> meme, right? I'm not going to say anything bad. But unironically, the first corp we ever recruited was a pure Polish corp. And the second corp after that that we recruited was a pure French corp, right? And you can imagine the memes went left, right, top and center, dude. And of course, you got turned down for art school, right? Oh, no, I never applied to art school. I'm just a PvP EVE online artist, right? No, he's, he's more than just a PvP. He, uh, you're a true born and bred pirate because you're not only uh -huh. my, the security status minus 10, but your faction status to, I think, pretty much everything is minus 10 as well. There's no way for the foreseeable six years worth of potential grinding would you ever be able to securely go through high sec in any of the Empire space. So realistically not, right? I can never go back to high sec. Technically... I mean, if I spend like two, three, four, five months grinding missions, maybe I can go back to high sec. But I mean, what am I doing in high sec anyways, right? So I just stay in low sec and null sec, whatever. I mean, mostly in low sec, but at least I can go to null sec. Well, well it, fits, it fits with the self-acclaimed pirate from Austria, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, why, why the love for low sec? Because a lot of people have come to low sec and a lot of people have gone. It's... And as well as that, Faction Warfare and a lot of low-sec things haven't gotten a lot of love from CCP over the years. Well, I grew up in low-sec, and I definitely witnessed the golden years of low-sec, right? Um, where everybody used to be there, right? Like, there used to be a, a big pirate war between Shadow Cartel and Snuff uh, Box at the time, right? And the militias were big and able to form their own 100-man faction battleship fleets and have some thread bombs on the side and when you would undock every evening um with like 10 15 20 guys you could roam in hacks command ships and you would find two to three fights every single evening because the area was very populated right but over the years it died out and the majority of people i would say left low sec got soaked up by groups like pandemic horde brave newbies test alliance and probably goons as well right like all the major ultra blobs these days kind of like soaked up obviously all the refugees that didn't want to play in low sag anymore <laughs> but we still stay here because it's still more fun than i don't know 
being part of an insane power block in Nullsec, to us at least, right? I mean, if you're having fun doing that, all power to you. It's a game and you should have fun playing it. But for us, it's not what we want. We don't want to be a C2 group rolling wormholes to farm noobs in Nullsec. That also doesn't seem very interesting. Wormhole brawling is very limited on cap usage, so that's bad RNG. So we stay in low sec and try to get the best fights we can and hope that one day, maybe, hopefully, CCP will actually do something to low sec that's not horrible. Well, hey, what about if we if we chase all the paper tigers out of high sec? They might actually be forced to go to null, uh, to low sec and actually fight you guys. Yeah, but why would they go to low sec if they could go to null sec? Because they'll be rumble stormed in in null sec. Yeah, but I think I mean. Look at it like this, right? <clears throat> if there's a lot of people suddenly looking for a new home, right? I mean, these giga blobs, they're looking for new people every fucking day, right? I mean, I can make 20 new accounts right now and an app into Pandemic Horde and every single character is going to get accepted, right? Why would they go to low sec where they can't make any money, where they will just get PvP'd and where the good groups have insane recruiting requirements when they can just be in a giga blob where making money is very safe and easy? And, you know, life in general is peaceful. And uh, when there's a ping for fleet, you get PvP content if you're into it. While in low sec, you need to be very self-sufficient. You need to have, like, if you want to make real money, you need to have at least four accounts, like, I don't know, multiple carriers, right? Like, the only way to make real money is, like, I guess, level fives these days or farming out the north in a rock hole. But low sec is so densely populated with groups, right? Like, still, to this day, compared to null sec, that rock hole mining is only possible if you're part of one of the two big groups in low sec and everybody else gets dunked right okay then tell, tell me about what a paper tiger is from your perspective well it's just all these uh bloodthirsty uh griefers in high sec that have uh, been living under some sort of uh, ccp protection for decades now and i think that the ccp should finally scare them out and uh, push them into low sec uh, if they want to fight and and kill people they should do it with people that uh, fight do back. the same. Yeah. Exactly, fight back. And again, if they if they go to null, well, they might just be given a broom and asked to go crabbing. So I don't know if that's really their gameplay. Tell me about your insane well, these insane requirements. I obviously with horde anybody any Tom, Dick, and Harry can get in. Maybe with a small gang group, you need. C2 group, you need more experience. Maybe you need an alt to be able to scan, an alt to be able to roll and such. But most of them, that's, you know, two, three accounts, mostly subcaps. What's uh, what's a low sec type of requirement skills? What's like well, an really entry level? It really depends what kind of group you're joining, right? I mean, there is definitely groups that have very low requirements, right? But what are you going to do there, right? Unless you want to join them because of the, you know, people in there and you really want to fly with them, right? You're not going to join one of the lower level groups, right? I mean... Unless you have people in there and or you just don't know where else to go, right? But currently there's many more places to go. Um and the bigger groups or more like hardcore groups, I would say, right? Um you need I don't know, you probably need a main that can fly every single subcap plus minimum a carrier. You need at least one dread alt, you need at least one fax alt. Preferably you wanna have a super alt as well. And if you can, second dread alt doesn't hurt, right? And you wanna have high grade slaves for every single character and yeah, you need money for everything because SRP is a meme, right? So, <laughs> you know. My God, th those are some pretty like strict requirements. And but that's not for all the groups, right? That's sort of like for the end game low sec groups, right? I mean, at the end of the day, low sec alliances are generally way smaller than low sec alliances, right? I mean, um, that's yeah. just a fact, you know, and the big ones have uh, very high requirements. But despite their size, why why are they so feared? Why are so few groups willing to, despite m being massively larger than, say, your group or uh, Snuff or any of these groups, why are they so reluctant to even fight them and the fear of being dropped by Snuff? Well, <laughs> that's a hard question to answer, actually, without saying anything that's maybe unfair to somebody else, right? But in general, I think that low sec groups that currently live in low sec, right? I mean, there's definitely always exceptions to the rule, okay? But in general, actual low sec pirate groups that still to this day live in low sec, they don't live here because the lands are so rich and you can make such easy money because that's definitely not the case, right? They live here for the PvP. 
that's it. They're PVPers, okay? They are only here for the PVP and nothing else, right? Everything else that happens is just like a little bit of a bonus on the top of it, but they're only here for the PVP. So these people are only about like min-maxing their ability to absolutely slam dunk you on a PVP grid, right? Whether that is like some small gangers, some mid-scale enthusiasts, or some, you know, people like Snuff that can form like 400 characters, right? But they're only after the PvP and they will try hard and they have everything set up. They use more expensive fits, they use high grade pods, and they absolutely know what they're doing because everything they're after is PvP, right? And how often do these massive fights happen compared to, say, in Nullsec? Because in Nullsec, a lot of fight, big fights are they're all politicized and you have to get approval from the highest level, you can't do this, you got this agreement. Well, with, with this war, there's actually not been that many fights but uh, what's how how often do big fights happen we've obviously seen, seen you know the one in Amake recently what do you consider big right because i think like on a scale where the biggest alliance is 800 members big is a very different thing right than on a scale where alliances are 20,000 members yeah, well that's a, that's to somebody point. who flies as small numbers as i do to me like a big fleet is anything more than the uh, 20 characters even 50 characters it's to me is like a blob how uh, how many people do you th in a fight do you think is big i actually don't know that um <laughs> let's let's look at let's look at what happened in lantern and Amamaki, right so let's call these fights big i guess right because we saw like 100 carriers and we saw local spike to a thousand in some of these fights right um so i guess that could be considered big right like not maybe like a giga ultra blob scale but i would consider it a big fight and I would also say that these fights are very rare. Like, it's definitely not the the thing that happens every single day and also not, like, multiple times per year, right? It only happens if all the stars align. Usually it happens when the current biggest alliance in Losec, which is Snuff, goes somewhere and tries to force somebody into fighting, right? So they need to make the move usually because nobody moves on them. And then it also needs the defending side to actually be willing to fight back, right? And that's usually when big fights happen. So that's maybe like, I don't know, like, you know, once per year or so. Not like one fight per year, but there's like going to be one time period per year where this might occur. And currently, I guess it's happening, right? Now, we've yeah. snuffed out uh, pushing into Lantern and Secede. How did uh, how did it come to pass that you are uh, fighting alongside them? I, I, I understand you're not actually blue to them because you're... Well, you lost your Varga to them the other week, but uh, how did you come to fight alongside them? So, first of all, there's an unwritten rule in Losec which has been forgotten, okay? And I absolutely hate all the other pirate groups that forgot this rule, which is, if the Nullsecers try to get involved, we get together and slap them back to Nullsec, okay? And uh, all these groups, like Siege Green, Dock Workers, like, uh, fucking even Amar Militia, right? Um are all blue to Nullsec groups, right? Like, most of them sort of, like, have a weird kind of deal going on with the Wrecking Crew Coalition, which are Nullsecers, right? They're the new Provi block, basically. Quite literally, actually, because they have the same amount of skill, unironically. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, that's one reason, right? Siding with the Nullsec blob doesn't seem to be the way to go for me as a true pirate role player. And then, also... The other side is already able to form like 1,200 characters, right? For a big timer. So we're just 20 dudes. Why would we side with a group that's already able to form 1,200 characters? That doesn't seem very interesting, right? So we rather side with a group that has less characters in fleet, less people, and has more appreciation for the fine art of multiboxing this game as hard as you can, right? And yeah, that's why we fight with them rather than with the other side, I guess. Now, with the fights uh, that have occurred, you've been able to pull pretty huge numbers into your fleets. Uh, Matt, all the uh, BR links are in the podcast room. Uh, with uh, the Lantern fight, you were able to pull... Well, how, if you were only 20 people, how, on average, how many uh, accounts do you your, well, your alliance per person multibox in these fights? Um, I don't know. I mean, in the Lantern fight, obviously, we're merging fleets with Snuffed Out together, right? So it's not just us, obviously. Um, I don't know, on average, how much we multibox. I don't know. I mean, I'd say the minimum is like three accounts, right? But we have some people running like, I don't know, like eight, nine Dreadouts and stuff, right? Like, that's the exception, obviously. 
but um, we can push some numbers with alts and so can snuff. So us and snuff together usually pull some decent -ish numbers, even though obviously we do not contribute as much as snuff does by far because they're just more people, right? And through just, I guess, making bold moves, we're able to fight against Wrecking Crew, right? Because I think the biggest problem that Wrecking Crew has, I don't know if that was included in your question really or not, but I guess the biggest problem that Wrecking Crew has with fighting is not being bold enough, right? Sort of like half-assing everything or not willing to go all in, right? And um, Snuff is very much willing to go all in and so are we. If we feed all of our stuff, that's okay to us. We don't care. Let's buy new ships. Who cares, right? It's a video game. But the opposing side seems to have a, like, a very big problem with the idea of losing ships, right? And that leads to half-assing and not going all in very often, which then just leads to feed. Tell me about this uh, half-assing. The Like, what, uh, what have they done wrong? That's uh, the one fight I was in, because uh, I heard about it, and I decided to do some looting. Uh, thank you very much for well, headshotting all those um, command ships. What happened in the Lantern fight on the 30th of April that, well, you felt they did wrong? Was that the hull timer? Or the armor timer? Do you know? That was the hull timer. They uh, sacrificed a lot of materials in order to destroy that fortisar. I believe you scooped the core. Yeah, we scooped the core as well. It was the... Uh, so a hundred, uh, hundred materials went down in that fight. What went wrong? So obviously, um, us and Snuff we formed um, uh, carriers, right, with fax machines and you know some other assets, uh, dreads and whatnot. And uh, we had, I think, uh, hard knocks and laser hawks on our side as well in an RT Tempest fleet issue fleet, right, trying to help us to deal with the overwhelming amount of subcaps on grid a bit. And we actually also had, I think, for that fight, Volta came in rail rocks. What a meme! It's 2021 and we're flying rail rocks. It's actually amazing. I love that ship. <laughs> um, and I think what Wrecking Crew decided to do was feed 137 Macarios, right? To take down the Fortisar. Not shooting ships at all, just feeding Macarios, right? And they did that on every single other timer, right? There was a timer, like multiple timers before in Seceed. And there was an, an armor timer before that in Lantorn, obviously, because we're at Hull Timer. And the tactic has always been the same, which is just ram Macarials and just try to kill the structure before they run out of max, right? Um, obviously, they achieved their objective. But are they really winning? I don't know, right? Because, I mean, I think we've seen a screenshot on uh, Reddit where just in Amamake or wherever that stash is, there's another 37 Fortisars waiting to just be put down, right? And uh, how many more times can you feed 130 Macarials times two, because there's an armor and a hull timer, before you run out of max, right? Or out of morale on your people's side, because Snuff can just plant down a new Fortisar and RC, what are they going to do? Like feed another 130 on the armor and another 130 on the uh, hull timer? I don't know if that's really the definition of winning, I guess. Even though the objective was achieved, right? They won it. They killed the Fortisar. But they didn't even hold grid control. They didn't, uh, well, they certainly didn't recover the core. What would have you done differently? I mean, that's really hard to tell, right? <laughs> like, uh, but uh, I think in general, I'm a very aggressive player, NFC, right? Because I personally don't care if we wipe at all, right? I mean... Maybe that's the wrong wording because I love winning and I want to win every single fight I go into. And if I don't win, I'm mad, okay? But if I lose, that's part of the deal, right? If you go out to play, you risk losing. Um, but if you never really play the game, then you can't win or lose, right? Which I think is what RC is currently doing. They're just feeding. Um, so what I would have done, actually, in that fight, for example, I would have actually refit to ACs, maximum jammers, and all these Macarials, warp in on these carriers at zero and start blasting, like, I don't know, triage, spread ECM on fighters, drop like a handful long range threads at range, and start blasting triage as well, right? And then just see what happens. Because that way you at least get a chance of doing something and making something happen, and you can put snuff on the back foot and wait for a response. But if you're just sitting there feeding Macarials, nothing's going to happen. You're just going to feed Macarials and the Fortisar will die. But what are you achieving, right? You're not getting anywhere. By pure numbers, uh, they should absolutely wipe you out every time, right? They, do they have more dreads than you? 
Well, by pure numbers, they should wipe us out on every single fight, right? On both the first CC Fortisar and both timers and Lantorn Fortisars, they actually formed more dreads and more, obviously, subcaps, right? Like, significantly more, because we formed none, low. Um, but the most important thing is they formed more dreads and more supers, right? But they decided to not pull the trigger. Right. If they would have pulled the trigger, maybe Snuff would have made the smarter plays and won the fight. Maybe, I don't know, having high-grade slaves would have given them the edge. Who knows? But even though you're having superior numbers, I mean, especially with having superior numbers, I think I would have taken the risk and just go in, right? And just fucking kill some caps. If you lose, you lose. I don't know. I mean, if you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. But if you're just feeding Macarios, this doesn't seem very interesting to me, right? I mean, that's at least not what I would have done. I would have at least used Tal Wars, lol. My god, you're, a, you're, you're you're like a lion. You, Well, you just go in. <laughs> I mean, I've fed so many fleets before, really, that I don't feel anything anymore. I'm like, I mean, sure, I'm sad afterwards, but not because I fed or anything, just well, because I didn't <clears throat> win the fight, right? But Sounds I think... like you're competitive, and that's fine, uh, but you don't take it personally, and you get back up and you compete again. Exactly, right? And I think that's the way to go, at least for me personally, right? Yeah. Like, I just like PvP in EVE Online, right? And especially what I love is a, an amazingly, like, intense fight, right? And if you lose it, you lose it. But if you're never going in to risk it, then you can never win it, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened uh, just the other day in uh, Amamaki, actually, right outside the Keepstar, Wrecking Crew, who you've criticized a little bit, uh, came in, it seemed like a bold move trying to take out a shield timer on that keep star, and that totally backfired. Do you, are you familiar with it? Well, um, I was there actually, multi boxing Hicks at like half past, half past five in the morning. Oh. Lamau. Well, the Hicks um, were the heroes of that story, right? The, it, yeah, yeah, dude. Um, I don't want to shit talk Sedo for it, really, because I think Sedo, as you said, made a bold move, and I absolutely respect that. And I think also. Haiwanto and even Jonas, right? Like the Reddit posting uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't even too harsh on him, right? Like everybody respected it because at the end of the day, you got to have balls to do it, right? You need to, you know, not everybody's willing to do that on a keep star and especially not against snuff, right? Um, but again, there was for sure mistakes made, right? I mean, the obvious fact that Wrecking Crew is full of spies, right? Like not just Snuff. I mean, Snuff obviously has leadership level spies because they can just unanchor Faction for desires and offline Sotios, right? Um, so it should be aware, like Wrecking Crew should be aware of the fact that they have leadership spies. So if they plan an event like that, Snuff is probably going to know about this planned operation before the average Wrecking Crew line member knows about it because they have leadership intel, right? And on that day, actually, we were having a little scuffle in asset which is a system a few jumps from amamake and we noticed snuff moving a whole bunch of threads and other ships and tools out of the keep star to other systems and we were already thinking about like at first we're like oh shit they're gonna drop us because we currently had caps on grid but they didn't do that so we were like okay they're planning something right and when we then saw later on the Wrecking Crew Titans on the Keepstar grid, it was kind of obvious what was going on, right? They obviously knew about that up. They prepared, and the moment those Titans were there to shoot the shield timer, where they least expected to get counter dropped, they got absolutely slam bammed, right? Yeah. Well, they got trapped by uh, Hicks, which are heavy interdictors. Those are ships in low sec that are especially good at capturing uh, and tackling and grappling uh, super carriers like Titans. And Titans, and uh, and that's what happened. They got trapped. I think seven out of fifteen, however many came in originally. So, is it possible to keep out spies in a group as large as Wrecking Crew? Are you asking that question to me, it <laughs> or in general? How, it, how do how do you, do you keep out spies? Is is it just a result of being a smaller group? I mean, I don't know if we keep out spies, dude. I have no idea. Maybe we have spies. I'm pretty convinced we have a snuff spy or something. I don't know. That's just the way I play the game. Because if you think you have no spies, then stuff like the Amamaki incident happens, right? You're like, yep, we got no intel leaks, and suddenly you're starting to feed Titans, right? So I just 
assume there's a snuff spy and I assume that there's a wrecking crew spy. I try my best to keep the spies out of the corp and the lines, but at the end of the day, um, if they really want to, and if they're good at it, they will get in, right? And I mean, obviously in groups like wrecking crew, where there are so many different alliances with different recruitment policies and different, like, what do you call it? Like experience scales on their recruitment. It is probably impossible to keep spies out and they should be aware of it, right? Like obviously putting a spy into a group like wrecking crew is pretty easy because there's alliances that will take more or less any character. If you're trying to put a spy into our group, you need to at least come in with a dread alt and a fax alt, right? So that spy is a bit more high effort. But if somebody really wanted to, they can absolutely do it. It's no big deal, right? Um, okay, so that was the fight that happened just the other day. It was actually a dramatic fight. Seven Titans went down on one side, one and uh, Super Carrier on the other. So it was definitely notable. It went over a trillion isk. Um, but more to the point of the layer of space that you occupy and the reasons you explained why you occupy low security space, do you think that it's going to get better with some of the changes that are being made to the industrial upgrade? We've actually all been thinking about that a lot, right? Because these changes are quite drastic. Yeah. I think there is some good things for us happening as smaller groups because low sec groups in general are smaller than no sec groups. But at the same time, I also think we're losing a lot of options, right? Because, for example, right now, the way we play the game is we use our ability to multibox a lot of caps to punch above our weight, right? If a Dreadnought is going to cost me 10 billion is to fit up and, you know, build and fit up, and there's no ways of actually making any ISK in low sec, like, you know, uh, I mean, there is ways to make ISK, right? But as I said, it's like much more complicated than low sec and not as easily accessible. Then I think that will be a problem, right? And small groups will have to recruit more and have to blob it up, you know? It's the same thing with like raw calls, right? Like active moon mining, was really not good for low sec because low sec groups are very small, but you're supposed to mine these moons with raw calls. And you can only protect raw calls if you're a big group, right? If you're a 20 man group, protecting raw calls, dude, I don't know. I think you're going to feed them, right? So the fact that we are having to pay 10 billion isk for a dreadnought potentially, I don't like that too much. The fact that other people that are maybe worse on isk than us can't bring as expensive ships might be good. At the same time, I also heard that raw calls are supposed to go back to boosting ships and we're going to all be sitting in subcaps mining again. I think that's actually pretty cool because we can't sit in raw calls on an Atonor because, uh, yeah, we'll probably die and we can't defend it, right? And there's a lot of groups that are way too small to protect their raw calls and it would probably be very happy if mining wouldn't be based around having a lot of raw calls and a big blob to protect these raw calls, right? Because if you don't have the big blob, you can't protect the rock so you're not going to use them because every time you use them, you feed six bill per rock hole. That's not uh, good. Yeah. Well, do you have hope that it's going to improve uh, the overall landscape, though, of, um, of, of low sec? Not just like who can work in this environment, but do you think it'll draw people into dangerous waters to be able to resource better in a more diverse way? And will that be... Uh, more targets for you, even if you're not attacking the people coming into resource, maybe you're attacking the people who are coming in to attack the people who are coming into resource. Well, what is there to get from low sec, right? I mean, currently we have crockite and we're still bound to mine it <clears throat> with rock holes. I think we're getting gas clouds or something, right? Yeah, like gas, gas clouds are going to be like, are they going to be unique to low sec? I'm not sure, actually. I think there's a little bit of uh, repetition with wormhole space, but not, I'm not sure about I'm it. Haven't you been given a third of the required minerals for the game, and now also uh, gas, isogen. and you're going to get and you're going to get reactions as well? I think I think you're getting a lot of incentives to actually be in low sec. Whether or not someone actually dares to try and do it casually, that's a different story. Yeah, but as you said, right, like the uh, all these minerals, right, crocodile. You know what I said like one minute ago is you need to mine it with rockles. If you're not mining it with rockles, then you might want to like probably sit there on a moon single boxing your procurer as a low sec new bro and you would rather kill yourself than keep going <laughs> right so you have to be in a rock hole to do it and in order to be in a rock hole you need to be in a blob right which means it's the blobification of low sec if you either join a big block like 
you know, which isn't easy because there's not many and the really good ones have insane requirements or you're never going to touch that crockite, right? So having this crockite doesn't help low sec at all, right? It helps the two big groups in low sec, but everybody else is like, all right, cool. I guess we got crockite. Dude. Well, do you think that's going to draw in the kind of people that you don't like, which are null sec groups that are have a ton of people, the blobs you call them? I actually think so, yes, right? I mean, mm. um, I don't know the exact, I can't remember the exact time scale on when crockite got introduced to low sec as a unique mineral kind of thing. But I'm pretty sure that when the war in Delft is done, I would imagine that a lot of no sec groups are going to put their eyes towards low sec to start getting that crockite. And I don't know what else. I don't know if they need to farm the gas clouds themselves or if there's going to be enough supply on the open market. But I'm pretty sure like no sec groups will come to low sec to mine uh, crockite, right? Which... Why would you insist on using a rockle, at least uh, in, in, in the current scenario? Well, because I don't want to make like five million is per hour, dude. Well, uh, Hulk mines more than a rock wall at the moment, doesn't it? I don't know, dude. I just multi box some <laughs> rock when I feel like it, dude. Like, I'd never thought about Hulks. I just sit there in my rock holes. I'm like, okay. It's a lot easier to multi box a rock wall than a Hulk. I yeah, love... AFK wise, of course. But again, the, the the loss is also massive if you lose it, right? So you can you can throw barges at this Wait. problem like forever. have you have you okay counter question have you ever mined in low sec like I don't know over a long period of time in subcap barges did? Uh, not since two thousand and five or something like that. But All that right, was so... definitely not in a barge. All right, so here's the problem with low sec and mining. Okay. Like, not just Rockle mining. Rockle mining is probably the way to go because you can punch that in wool, which is really good, right? But the thing is with low sec, it is very densely populated. Even though the groups are very small, right? Like, way less people. Like, the entire region that I, we live in, which is, like, let's say, three regions, actually, Heimata, Metropolis, and the Bleak Lands, right? Um, has less people than Pandemic Horde Alliance, okay? Or whatever alliance. It has less people, but it's still more densely populated. In Amamake, we have two different groups currently living. Next door, one jump. In Sasit, we have another group living. Two jumps away from us in Bosboker, we have another group living. Two jumps the other way in Kormonen, we have another group living. Four jumps past Sasit, we have two other groups living, right? So basically, within five jumps, there's already six groups living, and that is only counting the ones that can form like 30 people plus, okay? So if you're sitting there on that crockite with your barges, chances are, because everybody's constantly roaming in frigates, they will scout your barges, a fucking slasher's gonna slide in, spread tackle, more slashers are gonna come slide in, spread tackle, scepters show up, nano gangers show up, and boom, you're dead. And that will happen 10 minutes after you start mining, and I don't think that's very profitable. This is low sec. You can't you can't evict these people out. They could sit in an NPC station. This is no, but it's figured out, right? They they, they are spread so so much and and cover all the low sec areas, right? So they they know everything. They have eyes on pretty much everywhere where you can start doing anything. So it's very difficult to hide from these groups. This is what you mean when you're saying that it's high density, right? Yeah, but high density I means it's like. I mean, most of the groups don't have eyes constantly everywhere, right? But there's constantly um, the faction warfare groups roaming around doing the faction warfare things. There's the pirate groups that are between big fights. They're sort of like just roaming, looking for PvP. And then there's random dudes also just roaming, looking for PvP. And if you're on a crockite belt, you will get found within 10 minutes, 100%. Mm -hmm. And then you're tackled and dead, right? Because also in low sec, by the way, um, drone assist doesn't work, by the way right? Because of, I don't know if it's a crime watch system or whatever it's called, right? But if you assist your drones to somebody and that somebody then like uses his target painter or whatever to send the drones off to a target, the drones will not go to a target if you could take a security standing hit because of attacking that target, which is why drone assist doesn't work in low sec, which also really doesn't help with deboxing subcap mining ships. I see, I see. Good grief. That's a real complicated system. Uh, one thing about low sec uh, that I'm curious about, you guys seem to be, Amamaki again has a, a center of gravity, right? You have at least a keep star there that is a free port, so it allows people to kind of, uh, uh, it gives them options. But you said you had uh, people that were close by. Every other system has two groups or so. Is that typical of low sec are there lots uh, is all of low sec that way with small groups spread out just a few systems apart i imagine they fight in between those systems 
Um, I wouldn't say all of low sec. Um, uh, not only I wouldn't say, I'm 100% sure not all of low sec, yeah. but definitely the faction warfare parts of low sec, which are the interesting parts if you want to PvP, right? Mm -hmm. um, everything else of low sec is very, I don't know, empty. Nobody is there. Nobody goes there. There is nothing really to gain there. The moons are usually like mediocre somewhat as well. I don't know if that's by chance or by design. I have no idea. But in general, um, the places that are desirable to live in are very densely populated, right? And because every system or, you know, 90% of the systems have multiple NPC stations, you can't really push any group out and any group that feels like it can just move in. Do you guys like know each other generally? You know, like the gangs on the other side of the street, on the other side of town. Uh, are you guys friendly? Oh, for sure. or what's that like? No, we hate everybody equally. <laughs> Equal opportunity <laughs> hater. No, I mean, there's some groups, for example, right, oh. which is also uh, haram, okay? <laughs> and uh, they blew each other up, which is not the way of the pirate, okay? The way of the pirate is you shoot everybody and you hate everybody equally. Once you dunk them, you can shake hands and say, good fight you know you drop the gfs in local and respect your enemy for bringing the brawl but uh, outside of that we just fight everybody um obviously there's some groups who are trying to get an advantage by like building i don't know like diplomatic i don't know blue donuts or whatever but uh that's not the way of the samurai do you, do you guys no? bat phone each other for instance uh we as it depends which group you're in right mm -hmm. like for example our group currently we don't bat phone anybody for anything right which uh, leads to a lot of feeding, but we, at least I personally always tell my boys that uh, I would rather lose my own fight than have somebody else carry me through it, okay? Um, most other groups don't bat phone a lot either, but obviously there are some that will bat phone heavily, right? And it's always the boys that bat phone because winning is very important and losing ships is a spooky thought. What do you guys do about bat phoning, though? Is that something like you, uh, you must look at them and say like, you know, you're you're lesser because you had to call people in to save your butt. Do you have of some course, way of yeah, counteracting bat phones? Um, reputation? Outplay them, you know? What's that? Outplay them, you know? <laughs> like Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, like reputation-wise, do you guys uh, look down on them if they do? Is there something to, to of counter? Of course. Yeah. Uh, obviously, of course, right? Like if there's a group that is on its own big enough to fight you or even bigger and they still bat phone because they think that they could lose the fight potentially if they don't. Then you look down on them and you tell them that, in my opinion, you're pretty shit, dude. And you should maybe go back to Pandemic Horde or Brave Newbies and L2P a bit. Does that? Do you find that that works at all? I mean, no, dude. They just shit talk back, obviously. I mean, you know. They still like, bad phone. Yeah. yeah I they wonder. Still right? bad phone. Because there's like, I mean, wait, how do you counter bad phones? That's one of the problems of the game. Uh, but I guess there's no counter. It, it is really annoying because I think there would be more content if people would just be willing to accept loss, right? Yeah. But accepting loss, a lot of people don't like to do it. And that means there is a lot of bad phoning happening, a lot of blueing other people up and a lot of like growing in size because, you know, like losing is not a cool thing for many people, even though it's part of the game, you know? Yeah, it's like a no fight or bat phone or recruit until you get really big. And uh, it just seems like the same old formula. But I like what you're doing in that uh, you're competitive, you hate to lose, which I like. That means you care, and uh, but you'll take fights anyway and try to improve yourselves to, to do it. I mean, obviously, if there's zero way to win, then I'm not taking the fight, right? I mean, if there's literally no chance, then, I mean, sometimes you just have to dodge, you know? But if there's the slightest chance of winning the fight, then I think we're just going in and we see what we can do. And that's something, for example, that... I personally respect about snuff because usually they also just go in and hope for the enemy to pull the trigger and let's have a brawl, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think snuff is getting a lot of shit for what they're doing, but at the same time, they're playing the game, right? They're going out there, they're attacking, they're aggressing, and I don't know why I feel like I have to defend them, but I just feel like there's a lot of people lately that are like, snuff is the boogeyman or like they're bad for the game and toxic. I think they're just playing the game, you know? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's exactly what they're doing. If you... Uh, listen to Hai Wan too. He's you know trying to get some action out of the game. He's still here playing it. I think he took a break for a while, but he came back. And uh, that's what those guys do. Um, about low sec, though, I'm really curious about it because it's actually kind of a mystery for uh, a lot of people that watch this show, I think. Um, and we don't service it enough. We'll probably do a better job in the future. But um, do you guys migrate to follow anything? Or it seems like 
you might be in a special situation, but I wonder what's the chemistry of low sec with groups? Do they kind of migrate to where the killing is best? Kind of like following a herd? Well, the killing is usually best in the two faction warfare areas, which is like Black Rice and what are the connected areas? Like, I don't know, is it Sinclair Zone? I don't know. Right? Uh, Black, Black Rice, Rice Blasted, Blasted and Black Rice Blasted, Lone. Right? Yeah. And then there's the other faction warfare zone, which is like Heimatar, Metropolis, and Great Wall, not Great Wildlands, uh, the Bleak Lands, right? And those two faction warfare zones is where all the content is because there's the faction warfare groups themselves, they are content for your day to day PvP. There's the smaller pirate groups hunting those for the day to day PvP. And then there's the bigger pirate groups hunting the smaller pirate groups for their day to day PvP. So that's how naturally, I guess, um, how sort of like the focused areas of PvP come together, right? And it's all based around like, I guess, faction warfare people just playing the game, right? Um, Black Rise has been dying out a bit, mostly because of Triglavian invasions, sadly, right? The Triglavian invasions very much killed Black Rise as a faction warfare area. Mm -hmm. With like some important choke points turning into Triglavian systems with the wear posts on them where you can just get absolutely hazed, you know, and for some long time even insta pointed before you get hazed. So that wasn't very good. Um, so Black Rise is more or less dead, which led to multiple faction warfare groups and some pirate groups to also move to the southern war zone of Amar and Minmatar. There's obviously much more low sec, right? There's like, I don't know, Genesis and. Uh, uh, where is this LSH live? What is what is it called? Iridia. Iridia, right? And I don't know, there's like Derelict and yeah. some other stuff, but nobody lives there, so nobody goes there because the money is not good, right? So you're not going to any other low sec because you want to make money, right? Money overall in low sec is just not very easy to make, right? Not very abundant, so you don't go there. And there's also nobody else to PvP, so you don't go there for the PvP either. So everybody sort of like congregates in these faction warfare zones except the northern one has been kind of killed by Triglavian invasions. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Because they took a big chunk out of Kaldari space, I think. It, it mostly was like some big choke points, right? Like some, I think Hikoken is pretty important. It kind of like connects uh, two big parts of that area. And that thing is a Triglavian system now. And I think Red Sato and some other systems. I don't know. I don't know all the systems up there that are mm -hmm. Triglavian, but... A bunch of them turned Triglavian and kind of killed Black Rice over the time. There's still people there, but it is an not only is Losek a shadow of its former self, but Black Rice in its current form is a shadow of the shadow of its former <laughs> self, right? So <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> what would what would give uh, Losek more life? Because there's a lot of the updates so far have generally hurt it more and more. What have there any been? Have there been any updates that have given it life recently, or what would give Losek a breath of fresh air, new life, a second wind? I actually think um, just to, yesterday, actually, I talked with some friends about it, and um, I think we see it every time that CCB does some sort of like a holiday event or whatever event, right? And I think uh, what, what Losek needs um, is a way to make ISK, a way to get people into space, right? And a rework of Faction Warfare, because Faction Warfare right now is unplayable, right? I mean, it is playable, obviously, because people play it, okay, but it is horribly designed. I can go into that if you want, because there's so many design flaws, it actually will make you sick, okay? Um, I think what Losec needs is an easy way to make money to get people into space, right? Losec needs a reason for the average player, right, to go out into space and do something, yeah? And we see it on every single event, be it a holiday event or whatever kind of event, that when there is something to do in low sec, suddenly there's a lot of content to be had, right? Currently, we have the Easter event with the hunt sites, and there's these hunt master sites where you can go in with um, T2 Desi or lower. And uh, you can make, like, I think 200 mil to 1.5 billion is per site, which is, you know, like, I mean, that never happens. I didn't have a single drop like that, but, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. On average, it's still pretty good ISK. And it gets people into space. There's people running these sites, a lot of people. There's a lot of people hunting the people hunting those sites. Or like, there's a lot of people hunting the people that are running the sites, right? Just like in NoSec, if you're out there in a signature, like in an anomaly crabbing or mining, people go and try and tackle and kill you, right? 
then there are people like others, right? So there's a lot of people suddenly out in space. And when this event is done, it's going to be dead again, right? Like not dead, dead, but way less content than currently, right? I think, for example, the best event we had so far was actually the winter event where yeah. we had these winter storms or whatever in LoSec. And there were sites that you could run, I think, solo. Like some people ran it. I saw marauders, battleships, multiple battle cruisers, right? Whatever. Like you could have like a, a gang of smaller ships or one really big strong ship run these sites. That puts people into space trying to make money, put assets out there that can be tackled, right? There's people running these sites. There's people hunting the people running these sites since they're big stuff. It's easy to tackle them, which leads to content. There might be friends trying to protect the people running the sites, right? And then there's other people just roaming the general area because the general area is full of content and they know that and they know that they have a high chance of getting content, right? So everything just is, it, it just like stacks up on each other to content, right? Stuff's happening. People are out in space and there's stuff to do, right? But For the pve -er and the pvp -er. And currently, outside of events, there's not that much to do, really. And isn't that the, the main problem, that it's fine when CCP helps you guys out and, and nudges uh, with big incentives and then people, of course, get, uh, well, you have to go and get stuff like 250 million and stuff like that, right? Then, then you have a really good reason to go there. But what I feel like you guys are missing is homesteaders, right? You're basically like savages. And if there's no homesteaders coming out and trying to settle, then you don't have permanent targets. You have to feed on each other, right? And the only way to get that is to take away some of your, I don't know, mobility, perfect free intel. Uh, no one is, they, they won't even get into the forest to, to chop down the, the, the logs to actually build a, a, a cabin, right? They, they get killed before they actually get a foothold. So you, you want buffs to incentives to colonize low sec and therefore they would be yeah, this is what you're seeing with the... Uh, Pray you, for the very, wolves. Very soon you're going to see these reaction things uh, pop up. But the problem with that is that LOSEC will not really pull people because there is, at the moment, there is the perfect free intel from uh, the ESI polls, right? That means that it's a ding-dong dinner bell and uh, you, everyone that lives in NOLSEC will find them instantly, right? There's just too much easy intel and... And the people that live in Nolsek knows, uh, sorry, Losek know so well how the the environment works, and they have covered most of it. So it's it's difficult to 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 start uh, creeping in there. You can go there opportunistically in events and stuff like that, and then you get well, there's a high mortality rate. Let's just say, right? But there's just not enough interesting targets for for Losek to to play around with because all the sheep keep dying. I don't want to cut you off. But no, I would have good. liked the uh, Baltrum to actually uh, reply to that. And oh, and... oh, for sure, I would love to. Dude. Okay, um, <laughs> okay. absolutely. That um, I just didn't know like what the etiquette here was. You know, so I was holding oh, back. Like a polite, um, polite young man. As you said, right? Um, you know, the sheep are getting killed and whatnot. But as I said earlier, like Losek is about the PvP, right? If you go here, you need to be able to PvP. You need to be able to defend yourself, right? If you come here with a forty k or player blob you can absolutely do that right but there's npc stations here you can't get the pirates out of low sec and i think that's very important because it makes low sec piratable right that's the entire the idea of pirates you know they're hiding in these npc stations and when you're not on the watch they come and slap you right so um that's why there's a high mortality rate but I think what Losec really needs is, as I said, a reason to be out in space, and that is, you know, to make money. Currently, what do you do? Like, there's nothing to do, right? And faction warfare is horribly designed. I don't know if you ever looked into faction warfare, but yeah, it's just not only did Citadels kill it, but over the last eight years or so, or I don't know how long, there has been no reworks, nothing, okay? Like, if you want to take a system, you need to run these plexes, yeah, these sites that are gated. And they all have the same amount of contribution to the percentile amount that you're pushing the system, right? You need to push a system towards 100% and then your faction can take the system, which used to be a big deal because you can only dock the Ultra Warfare player. Um, but a novice plex that takes like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to run gives you the same amount of progress towards that system's capture as a open plex, which takes half an hour to run or even longer. I don't know, right? So there's no reason to be out there running open plexes in battleships 
the meta is everybody's out there in inertia stabilized punishers because they have the most low slots, which is not interesting, you know? Sorry about that. Internet errors. Thank you. Sorry about the uh, interruptions there. We're still here with Baltram, uh, low sec pirate. And uh, why don't you go ahead and pirate repeat that? Role player. Pirate role player. Prince of Darkness. <laughs> Prince of, that's my favorite one. Great right. meme. Go ahead and uh, let's pick it up where we left off. Uh, you, you had actually just finished talking about a lot of the changes that you would like to see for uh, faction warfare. And then we went on to a different question. What was that question? Uh, I was asking Caleb about what's going on with reactions and uh, low sec, right? Because he mentioned something about reactions earlier and that that might drive people to low sec. I don't know. I want to under understand it, right? Because I'm well, not an industry guy. I'm a PvP artist. There might be attempts to use low sec as a way to break a future potential upcoming uh, interdiction and cartel forming uh, between null sec and the TTC. The you will have if you don't want to be uh, submitting to their cartel rules and stuff like that. Um, you can avoid that by doing stuff in wormholes and in low sec, because um, as it is now, it doesn't look like we're going to get access to build this in in high sec or, and react them in high sec, even though that might actually be allowed ev eventually, because. Otherwise, we could. This is again. This is um, back to what happened with OTEC when they did the OTEC cartel, right? Um, you're going to see something similar because one of the big export uh, goods from Null and the power that Null would ha will have with these industry changes is that that is going to to be their gravy train. And if they can if if they can form a cartel under that, they can make a f ton more money, right? And and that makes low sec look interesting to there's going to be value there, right? Both in the resources that they can gather there and also react there if they can, again, back to doing the homesteading. And it's uh, it's the RV uh, cooking mess, right? <laughs> now, I st well, uh, I believe, Paltrum, you're one line of a PvP and uh, an FC. If somebody wanted to, you know, go into low sec, they're, they're not, definitely not a sheet. They were somebody who wants to get involved in get stuck in, in this battle and actually get to drop their capital for once, unlike um, what's going on in the war. What would be the requirements to join your group? Uh, first of all, I'm not just a lion in PvP, okay? I used to be rank one on Z-Kill for half a year, okay? Thank you very much. Best PvP in the game, by the way. Um, no. Um, what's the requirement to get into our group? I don't know, dude. Like the absolute minimum is have a main that can fly everything, right? Kinda like subcap wise, and has maxed out rigging skills. Because when I design a doctrine, I design it around having everything maxed out, which means that even on maxed out skills, sometimes there's zero CPU left. Lamau. Um, and you can't have fitting implants because we're using slaves and now nirvanas. Because by the way, nirvanas are absolutely broken. Um, so you want to have a main that can fly everything and is very maxed out on SP. And you want to have a dread alt, and if you can, preferably a fax. And if you have more capital alts, that's a big plus, right? But yeah, a main that can fly everything, subcap wise minimum. A dread alt and a fax alt would be very nice. That's sort of like the minimum requirements for us. Everything on top of that will give you better chances, right? Obviously, you kind of want to fit in because... You know, we're like a small group of family, right? And if you can't take a joke, then, or if you're like, you know, like easily hurt about some things or you just don't like the way things are going, then, you know, I don't know. You need to find a group that's more suited for you because, you know, we're a small group. We all like each other and we all like hanging out and just PvP. Well, how do you meet new people, though, if you're a tight group, for instance? How do you come across? Well, that's a problem, right? Yeah. It's really hard. It's actually really hard, especially yeah. now with these changes. We probably will have to recruit, actually, which means we're probably opening up our recruitment somewhat. Like before, our recruitment was like, you know, two capital alts minimum, preferably three and a super, and you needed to have double vouch to get in. Double vouch. Wow. Yeah, double vouch. But like double rainbow. Yeah, double rainbow, dude. But no, like uh, with the changes of like caps being so expensive, it just means that we need to stock up on real people because, you know, uh, we just can't afford to feed caps forever, you know? And that's our way of fighting outnumbered, like multiboxing big things, you know? 
So mm -hmm. we'll probably have to recruit and lower the recruitment standards, which is probably going to be a dread out minimum or something, you know? Can I just say OP success? OP success? Because you just said you're going to have to stock up on real people. And I think uh, CCP just uh, cheered and opened, opened another bottle of champagne on that one. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? I mean, are you trying to refer to bots or do you mean like multi bots? I'm talking about alts, right? And, and, and the whole uh, horizontal scaling with just having uh, uh, many, K many, many accounts and Caleb many is uh, against. characters. Caleb is this against is a problem for the game. Because yeah. because this this in, this incentivizes uh, well recruitment of real people, and you just said we're gonna have to recruit some real people, and this is exactly what this game needs: more value on real warm hands instead of alts. Oh yeah, of course, right? And uh, I mean, there's enough groups out there that are recruiting real people, right? But it's hard to find real people that are very good at the game and not already in a very good group, you know. Yeah, you're gonna have to snipe some brain power from Null, right? So, so, so they stop doing the face rolling on the gravy train. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm personally actually hoping that there's some people out there in Nullsec with some capital alts that want to slide in on some dank low sec PvP, you know. But uh, as I this said, I would love to recruit real people. You just, you know, like unless I want to recruit T1 Hurricane pilots, it's hard to find people that you know are good, you know, like and are not already in a good group. Well, that's interesting. And yeah, this is about lifestyle, right? Because I, I do believe that you can effectively snipe from, from yeah. Null, right? Because Null's feeder corpse is one of... Okay, this is one of the things that I think kind of broke the game a little bit because I think we covered this earlier, that people just skip low seg and skip wormholes and jump straight to Null, right? And and eventually they, they will have lived in, in, in Null under that whole scenario and empire building and whatever they do that out there... Um, but if they want to experience more and, and new interesting things, they will have to upgrade to play with someone like you guys, right, in, in low sec, because there is more drama, there is more uh, risk in the game, so to speak, right? I actually agree, which is why I am in low sec, because I love it, right? Um, I think the PvP is much more interesting. I think for the PvPer himself, right, the line member of a fleet, and let's talk about fleet warfare, okay? And also for the FC themselves, right? Because let's say you're a low, null sec line member or FC, right? You're FCing a 250-man maxed out Munin fleet or you're a line member. That's literally no fucking gameplay, right? You press that button whenever it's ready to push your fucking artillery, 725 millimeter auto-repeating Kush cannons, okay? And, uh, and, and that's it. And as the FC, you're just like this guy and then 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 this guy. And then this guy, right? But in low sec, you're running like five accounts, right? You're fighting with 20, 30 dudes against like 100 people, right? You're multiboxing really hard. You know, the FC has to think of so many things, right? The comms are like 2 billion ISK T2 rig pirate battleships, you know? We're using abyssal modules on our ship to push the envelope just that bit further, you know? 99% webs use low angle dreadnoughts to one tap subcaps because we're so low on numbers. It's our only way to kill subcaps, you know? Spread Balgorn nudes, use talisman implant pods to pressure the enemy facts, you know? And we only have one Balgorn pilot available, you know? There's a lot more gameplay to be had. It's just not that every new bro can immediately access that and the groups that do it will not take these new bros, right? Yeah, I see yeah. your future being uh, some sort of, uh, well, combination of allowing or defending some homesteading and doing some sniping from Null, right? Because that could actually uh, revitalize uh, low sec. And I think that is what CCP is trying to do. I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but you can already see that putting value in low sec, which they definitely have, uh, is step one. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, if you uh, like, how often do these uh, like fragging all these materials uh, happen? And you probably added a lot of kill marks to your carriers. That's was that fight fun, or do you wish? Uh, do you feel disappointed about it, by it because of the lack of dreads? Absolutely disappointed. I was sitting there for three hours shooting materials in my carrier, and the enemy never made a move. They were never shooting at us. We were never at risk losing any caps. I was like, oh, no, did not very interesting. Uh, what one more thing on the uh, 
the whole influx of players into low sec, maybe they're drawn in by homesteading, which is building a house as, as you, you mean it, or a brain drain coming from null sec that want better adventure. And uh, Baltrum just rattled off all the decision making you have to do in real time. And it's a ton. So if you're looking for ex extensive gameplay, it's in low sec. But here's my, my pushback to that. Uh, the culture of low sec and small gangs even, and some of the uh, culture that surrounds, you know, uh, your area, your group, maybe you specifically, does it push people away? Like you said, you can't take a joke. You're probably not allowed here. But there's a lot of memeing that goes on. That is easily goes into a lot of ugly areas. Does that happen with you guys? Do you protect against that? Is it poisonous? I, mean, I personally don't think it's poisonous, right? When I said, if you can't take a joke, you're not allowed here. It's not what I meant, or I don't even know if I said it. I mean, more like, you know, um, you got to be able to take a joke. You know, people are going to be calling you names. In low sec, everybody there, knows each other, right? Uh -huh. Everybody everybody knows each other. So when you, you, you find your arch enemy and he only lives two jumps away and you have multiple fights with them over like the course of a month, obviously there's going to be a lot of shit talking, right? And it might be very toxic sometimes, but I don't know. Um, it doesn't really touch me at all and i feel like people that get touched by it you know they're like whatever. well it sounds like there's a, a specific culture like if you're part of it you're in the right place if that repels you it's not for you that sort of thing i wonder how that works against your needs for in-game recruitment and stuff well it does maybe apply to us and other groups right but I think there's, as I said, there's many other small groups in LOSEC that are recruiting and are doing, you know, smaller scale PvP. And smaller scale is like, I mean, still 10, 15 people in fleet, right. which, you know, to like a LOSEC block, that doesn't sound like a lot. But if you're out in 10 people, you know, like six hacks and four guardians or whatever, and you run into a similar group, you can have the most amazing of fights, right? It lasts like 20 minutes. You're switching targets, everything. You can have the most amazing fights. You don't need to be in a blob, right? You don't need to be in the big alliance that has many dread outs as requirements. You don't need to do that, right? And for the bigger groups that have all these requirements and that shit talk each other, yes, it might be a bit toxic for somebody that isn't used to it, right? But I grew up on the fail heap challenge forums. Mm, yeah? yeah. And what I remember from that was whenever there was a fight and somebody played really badly or somebody called in a lot of friends and played like a like a poof or whatever then we would call them out on the forums and everybody would shit talk each other and everybody could publicly see it right and i think that was actually pretty cool i don't know why people are so mad about it you know if you if you make mistakes you get called out for it if you play like a like an idiot or you play like a I don't know, like a, like like you you know like you're very scared of losing ships and you're getting called out for it. I don't think that's toxic. I think that's you know for me personally that's um, encouraging for me at least, right? <laughs> that's because just if good somebody's coaching. like, yeah, for me it's like you play like a pussy. I'm like, dude, meet me in the club, you know, and I fucking <laughs> undock and let's brawl, dude. <laughs> Ser serious question, Baltram. Um, how would you feel if CCP actually forced uh, low seggers out of NPC stations if they were pirates and negative standing? I think that would be very bad because, as I said earlier, I think the NPC stations are a very important thing to LOSEC that makes it unique and sort of like allows piracy in the first place, right? Like, I don't know, half a year ago, a year ago or whatever, like more like half a year ago, I think, Goonswarm and friends came to Black Rise to push Snuffed Out out of Black Rise, right? Killing every single Fortizar, every single Atanor, every single structure they own, right? And <clears throat> if... Uh, NPC stations didn't exist, they would be able to do that. They would just be able to push any group, like these no sec giga blobs, right, full of people, mindless drones, right, would be able to push all the pirates out of space. And if that would be possible, low sec would be no different than no sec, right? Pirates couldn't hide anywhere, but the idea of playing a pirate is that you hide. And when you see your chance, you strike, right? And these NPC stations allow pirates to dock up and live, right? If you're able to be pushed out of low sec completely, then what's the point of low, having low sec in the first place? Well, you're wolves, and as long as there are NPC stations, these sheep are never safe. Yeah, but, they but might have you few... know what I mean, right? If you, if you if there's no NPC stations or you're not able to access them, then it's just no sec, you know? Then you might as well turn it to no sec. I think the NPC stations turn low sec to what it is because it allows pirates to have their safe havens to go to and stage out of and, you know, strike.
Mm. All right. Well, uh, it's been a really cool interview, despite some technical problems, Baltram. Thanks for staying up so late, uh, Mr. Prince of Darkness there. Last time, <laughs> last questions, if you guys have any, uh, Caleb. Oh, I do. Uh, Baltram, now for the people that you've been fighting against, these people that have constantly disappointed you in the fight, what would you say to them? What would you like out of them? What would you want them to do next time to well, not be such a disappointment? I mean, from what uh, our incredible SpySeg Intel network says, their morale is uh, below the water levels, okay? Which means I don't think there's much more coming anyways. But um, I think in general, I would like to say, you know, don't be scared of losing because if you're never going in, in it to win it, you can never win in the first place, you know? So... I don't know, have some more courage. And fuck it. If you lose, you lose it. If we lose, we lose. Who cares that I'm ready to feed? Mm, you don't hesitate, huh? If, would, do you think you would have been able to do this differently? Well, maybe not now, because as you said, the morale is so low. But if you and, say, Rocket X or Seto switch bodies at the start of the, uh, the campaign, do you think you would have, uh, d well, made uh, snuff attempts to get content different? I would have fed really hard. Obviously, right? <laughs> like, rather than like slowly feeding materials, you know, and just, I don't know, not achieving anything, I would have tried to cause damage, right? If there is an opening to cause damage, I think you need to do it, take it, and cause damage, you know? And that's what I would have tried. I would have seen what I think would be their dread numbers. I would have seen what I think would be their super numbers. I would have seen that I had more on both. And I was said, fuck it, let's brawl. If we lose, we lose it. Let's, I mean, there's capital uh, insurance and Rocket X says the SRP wallet is full. Let's go, dude. Ah, uh, well, in Seto's case, I worry for his uh, credibility losing all of these super capitals multiple times. All right, well, we'll leave it right there, Caleb, Rich, um, Gregorin, and uh, our guest today, Baltrum. From what was it? No handlebars. Yeah, no handlebars. It's the alliance. Yeah. Good to meet you there in low sec and Namamaki. Uh, we'll be keeping up with your career uh, in the future. It was Thank very you. nice being here, actually. Really enjoyed having you. Uh, uh, I love the way you answer questions very thoroughly and with a lot of uh, with a lot of gusto. All right. I like to think of it as enthusiasm because I love the game. You know. Yeah, no, we can tell. And, and we actually appreciate that. Like, um, it's, I, I think everything that happens in this game happens for a reason. There are people who support a certain kind of game style, whether it's uh, a certain type of gameplay or a certain culture that they do. And it's clear that you're passionate about this game. You wouldn't be as good at it as you are if you weren't. So, good for you. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. All right. Good to meet you, Baltram. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us today. That is it for Talking in Stations tonight. Tomorrow we'll have some beautiful pictures of stuff that's on the test server, new, new landmarks to look at with new effects. It's really pretty amazing. Uh, but for now, wait for a raid. We will see you next time on Talking in Stations.